Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is recording for uh, chapter 6, uh, structure analysis. Basically, we have three types of uh, structures. The first one is truss, the second one is frame, and the third one is machine. Right? So, in this chapter 6, structure analysis, uh, we will learn 6.1 simple trusses, okay. 6.2 the method of joints, and 6.3 zero force members right uh we for trusses right okay 6.1 6.2 and 6.3 they are all about trusses right 6.4 uh method of section is another method to solve this trust uh, system right so basically for trust we have uh one method is this method of joints okay 6.2 and one is uh, 6.4 which is the method of section which we do not cover in this syllabus right and and the one which is not covered in the syllabus is 6.5, which is the uh, space trust, which means that 3D. So having said that, now you can guess that. You can, yeah, you can guess that the, our discussion for the trust is only two dimensional, right? 2D only. Right? And then we'll go to 6.6, .6, which is frames and machines. Okay, we'll distinguish between what is frame and what is machine. Right? Okay, now let's start with the 6.1 simple trust. Okay. What is truss? Truss is composed of slender members joined together at their end points or, or joints, right? So this truss is defined as two force member. Okay. So like I said, we we will just discuss on the planar trusses. What does it mean by that? It's just two dimensional, alright? Two dimensional only planar trusses. Okay, so look at this roof, okay, this roof system, roof design, right? So basically, planar trusses are used to support roofs and bridges, okay? Uh, I mean, you can do that for crane as well, all those stuff. But let's see, for this roof, right? Can you see this roof? Can you see that this roof is a plane, like a plate, right? But the one which supports this, this roof is this truss system. Can you see this? This this, that, this, okay. So this is what, I mean, until the end, okay. So that's why we say that this truss, okay, system consists of slender members. Slender members join together at the end joints, at the points, okay, end points, the joints, right? So this, uh, any load, on this roof, okay, this transmitted to the purlin, okay, this purlin, right, the series of purlins, okay, and then these purlins are connected, oh, sorry, not here, but these purlins are connected to the, it's not here, sorry, this one is not there, it's connected to the, the to the build truss, right, and then the truss will support the, the loads, right. So, like this truss, okay, we can those loads from the purlin, right, from the roof, and then to the purlin will be these loads. See, it's that because so this is from one roof, and this is these are from another roof. Okay, these are the loads, the external loads attached to the truss, right, and then these are the supports, the roller and pin. Okay, so this is the roof truss that you just saw. How actually it supports the load from the roof to the purlin and distributed to the to the joints, right? So please keep this in mind. Uh, we're going to discuss this uh, in more details later. For trusses, the loads will be applied only at the joints. All right, you cannot apply the load, for instance, directly to the member. All right. If you apply this, it will be something else. It will be frames. Okay. Why this is a truss system? I mean, the analysis of this is truss, truss uh, system because blows only apply at the joints. Okay. Which is join, this join, for instance, this join. Okay. Only at the joints. You cannot apply the load like this. Okay. So this one is for the roof and similar for the bridge, right? So for the bridge, you, you build your uh, truss 
you build your trust like this, right? And then along this line, okay, you have the, you have the, yeah, you have the bridge, okay? The plane for the bridge, right? And then it's supported. Again, by means of process planes, then we will apply the loads at the joints only, which means that joints, this, 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 and supports, okay? Roller over there and uh, pin over here, right? So remember this, for trusses, your loads will apply at the joints only. So application is like this, for instance, the roof, right? We have seen that this is, so this is the truss for the roof truss system and the loads are, I mean, going to that, that area, okay? Uh, the roof, the loop is the roof, right? And then like these bridges, okay? The truss is like this, the system, the truss system is like this, and then it will apply the load on the floor, okay? Load on the floor of the bridge, right? Same goes to the crane, like this one. So you have this, Trust systems, right? And then you, you apply the uh, apply the loop. For instance, here, and then you have this uh, floor to support the load will be transmitted to the to the trusses. Even these uh, trusses, right? Okay. So for simple trusses, okay. Let's go to the assumptions. Some of these we have discussed just now. Okay. So the first assumption is all loadings are applied at the joint. All right, you cannot apply the load at the member directly. No, okay. Having said that, the weight of the members, of course, the, the members have the weight, right? They have the weight, their own weight. The weight of the members are the weight, okay. And then the second assumption is the members are joined together by smooth pins. All right, having said that, when they are joined together by smooth pins, there is no bending moment. There is no moment generated as the support, right? So at the joints, there will be only forces acting on this on the on the members, all right? And having said that as well, the connections will provide center lines of the joint members are uh, concurrent, which means that for instance, take look take a look at these uh, four members, right? So they have they are concurrent about this point, right? So, and the third one, the trusses are formed with two force members which are either in tension or compression. What does it mean by that? For instance, you take individual member, slender member, okay? It's either in tension like this, okay? Or it is in compression like this, all right? And it is a two force member along, yeah, it is a two force member, okay? Along the axis, okay. Okay, so the design of a simple truss, okay, the idea is it must be rigid, preventing collapse. All right, the simplest form of the simple truss, okay, is triangle. All right, for instance, this one, okay, for instance, this one, which means that you have these three members, right, AC, CB, and AB, okay, at A. Uh, point A, it is pin. At point B, it is pin and roller, right? And then at point C, AC and BC are the member, uh, AC, um, AC member and BC member. They are connected, pin connected at C, and then you apply the loop P at the joint, okay, like I said before, because it's a truss. So, to, uh, to, to support, to have the simple truss, it must have this rectangular shape, the simplest form is rectangular. Okay. Even if you uh, add someone like the CD and the A member, two more members, it will be in triangular, triangular, triangular shape as well, right? So actually, we see later on that uh, actually for this one, this DC and the A will carry load. Okay, but do it. Don't worry for now. Okay. So we go to we have discussed simple trust. Okay, the idea of simple trust, and then now we go to. 6.2, which is the method of joints. Like I said, there is another method which is method of section, which is not covered in, which is not covered in your uh, syllabus. But uh, yeah, we will look at method of joints to solve for the for the uh, truss. Okay. So for truss, we need to know the force in each member, right? In either tension or compression, we need to know the force for each member. 
Okay, so these forces in the members are internal forces. What does it mean by that? Hmm? The external force, for instance, look at this, uh, this truss, okay? This fire internal load over there is what we call as the external force, all right? The internal force is, later on, you will see that it is like this, FBC and FBA, all right? The one which is acting in the member, okay, the trust member, we call it as internal forces. So all forces in the members are internal, all right? So for external force members, okay, for instance, this 500 return, the equation of equilibrium can be, can be applied, okay? And the force system acting at this joint is coplanar and concurrent, all right? Coplanar means that, like we said already, that this is a planar thrust, right? So this is always x, y, right? Planar, x, y, okay? Because this is, a, again, this is not space thrust 3D, this is planar thrust 2D. Right? And concurrent means that for each joint, for instance, this one, right? All forces, fire return or FBC or FA, they will, they will, the, the their lines will meet at point B, joint B. Okay, so this is what we call as concurrent, right? And again, and we know that this is tactics, right? So the summation of forces in X will be zero. Solution of forces in y equals to zero. It means that we need to satisfy the equilibrium. All right. So this now it comes the static. That is why, right? F is equal to zero. F is equal to zero. One quick question: Do you have moment over here? No. The answer is no. You don't have moment for the for the uh, what we call this uh, for the trust, right? Like I said, the, the points, all points are smooth pin, right? So it does not support movement, right? Please understand that. Okay. So the step for analysis in this method of joints. So if the truss support directions are not given, you have to draw the free body diagram of the entire truss and determine the support react reactions. Okay. Draw free body diagram. For a trust, it means support reactions, which means that for instance, something like this, right? You have A, B, B, C, and A, C, right? And then you have you are given these lengths, the dimensions, and then you know at B, you apply the 500 Newton load horizontally, right? To the right. Here, it's not given the supports at A and C, but you know that at A, you have, at A, you have this horizontal support and vertical support right why because it's in isn't it at c you have vertical support right the reason is because it's a smooth smooth contact right so the thing is you need to apply the equation of equilibrium to find this ax ay and cy okay you if they are not given, if the the reactions are not given, you have to find the reactions. This is what is meant by this step number one, right? And then draw the free graph of a joint with two, one or two unknowns. Okay, these things actually you need to do practices. I mean, now we go to finding the 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 forces, the internal forces uh, developed in the trust members, right? And then you apply why the name is method of joint is because we do the, the, the analysis at the joint like this, right? In this case, we, we choose point B and then if we choose point B, we'll find what is FBC and FBA, okay? So this is step number two, right? Draw the photo diagram on this, uh, on the joint, okay? with less, let, let, let's put it this way, with less uh, members, okay? So that you can basically solve it directly, okay? And then number three, you apply the equations of equilibrium, f is equal to zero, f equal to zero, and find the unknowns like this one, uh, sorry, like this one, when you apply that, you will find what is FBC and FBA. f is equal to zero, you will get FBC first, 
and then you do FOP0, you will get FPA, right? So the thing is, uh, okay, uh, okay, regarding the figure diagram, I forgot to mention, uh, unless you know the direction of the forces, just assume everything as tension first, right? Unless you know, you know the direction, okay? So when you draw the free body diagram, draw it something like this FBA going outwards from the from point from the joint okay from joint B why FBC we draw it inwards because here actually we, we know we know I mean from experience and from the understanding okay that actually it is compression that's why we draw it directly but if you don't know assume it as tension first all right and then if you got it negative okay if you got it negative, then it is opposite direction, which means that it is compression, right? And then this step number two, step number three, you, you repeat it until you got all the forces that you want to find, okay? Which means that you, you, you pick another point and then the join, draw, draw the free body diagram, and then apply the equation equilibrium, fx equals zero, f zero, try to find the, the unknowns, all right? Unknowns here mean, means the, the internal forces, okay, in the truss members. So before we do this analysis, we go to zero force members first. Okay, the reason is because what is zero force member? Zero force member is the member which supports no no loading. Okay, the reason is because we why we don't why don't we go solving the examples first? We go to studying about zero force member first because your method of joint previously, okay, your previous method of joint, it can be simplified by using this zero force members. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, I mean, there are a couple of things. This is a common as well. Okay, so first, first thing, look at this. Uh, this situation, all right? Can you see that here you have join F, which is pin, right, and then join B, uh, which is uh, roller supported, right, and then you have this A E A F. A, B, C, actually it's one, one member, okay? F, E, F, B, E, B, E, D, you see? E, C, B, C, and okay, D, C, right? So you have lots, you have lots of members, right? But actually, in this, in this situation, there are four members which are, which do not carry any load in this, in this point, okay? So what are they? They are ED, EC, FA, and FB, right? How do we know this? Okay, how do we know this? So, if a joint, okay, look at this statement. If a joint has only two non-collinear members and there is no external load or support reaction at that joint, then those two members are zero force members. What is why that? Okay, look at this. At D, okay, the one which is circled here at D, can you see that there are only two members, which is ED, right, and DC, okay? Can you see that at joint D, which has only two members, which are not, which are non-collinear, which means that it's not straight, like, okay, you see, A, B, B, C, for instance, if they are made from two different members, right, for instance, if A, B, and B, C, they're from two different members, then this is what we call as collinear. Okay. They are in the same line. Let's put it that way. Right. But you see that DE, ED, and DC, they are not in the same line, right? They have this angle, theta, right? So at this joint D, you can see that there are two members, DE and DC, which are not collinear, okay, non-collinear, and there is no external load applied to it and there's no support reaction applied to it. So we know that these two members, they are zero force members, which means that they are there, but they do not support any load. They, sorry, they are not carry any load. Not support, they are not carry any load. All right? And then the one is what? Look at point A, join A here. You have AF and AD. Sorry, AB. AF and AB. Can you see that they are non-collinear? Because they are they form right angle, right? I mean, if it is 
if the angle between them is 180 degree, which is they are on the same line, right? And then they are collinear, but they are not here. And at joint A, there is no applied load, external load, and there is no support reaction. So we know that this AB and this AF, they are zero force measurements, which means that they do not carry any load. So in your analysis, though actually you have this, and you have this, and you have this one, and one, and you have this one, these four members are not there. I mean, when you analysis, you have applied load P at C, at point C, at B, you have this roller support, and at uh, point F, joint F, you have this support, and you can simply use only one, two, three, four, five, only five members, right? The other four members, you just ignore them because they do not carry any load, right? Okay, that one is for the, the joint which has two non-collinear members, right? Now we go to a joint which has three members, okay? Zero for member as well, but now we go to a joint which has uh, three, four, uh, sorry, three, yeah, three members, right? So if let's say, if let's say at a joint you have two members which are collinear, okay, and there is no external load or reaction, okay, same like what we discussed in the in the two members, right? So we know that for the third one, the top, the third non-collinear member, it is a zero force member. What is it by that? Okay, let's look at this example. You see that you have this uh this trust system, you have member A B, B C, C D, D E, A E, A D, and A C, right? You apply the load at join E only, external load E, right? And then at join B, you have the P, which means that you have the X and Y supports, right? And at join A, it is a smooth pin, uh, not smooth pin, sorry, smooth contact. So you have only normal force like that, okay, to the, the, to the join, right? Horizontally. So what happened? Initially, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven members, right? We can find what are the zero force members here. Okay, look at join D, for instance. Okay, so you can see that at join D, you have three members attached to it AD, DC, and AD, DA. Okay, can you see that ED and DC they are collinear, which means that they, are, they form one straight line, right? The angle between them is 180 degrees. So the third one, and actually at D, you don't have support, you don't have external load, right? So this is another thing. No external load, no support, no reaction, okay? So the non, the third non-collinear member, which is AD, is a zero force member. That's not carry any load, right? And the one is look at joint C, right? You can see that you have three members over there attached to it, DC, CB, and AC, right? Can you see that DC and CB, they are collinear, which means that they form a straight line, right? So the third member, which is non-collinear, okay, AC here, it is a zero force member, doesn't carry any load. So if you redraw the truss system here, you can redraw it between, uh, uh, excluding the AD and AC, right? So you just have to find the these three members, right? Uh, three forces, right? Because because why three? Why you don't have E, D, and then C? Why don't you have E, D, E, D, D, C, C, B? Why? That is it because 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 they they are collinear. I mean the members E, D, member D, C, member C, B. They are collinear. So now they carry the same loads, right? So you see from this loss of members, right? You can simplify while understanding the concept of zero force members. You can simplify this and you will only left with, with smaller number of, of members, okay? Okay, uh, so there are several examples, for instance, fundamental problem 6.1. So some of these will be discussed uh, 
uh, in the tutorial, all right? So all this will be discussed on the tutorials, and then that's the end of your trust. Okay, six point one to six point three, right? Like I said again, uh, there is a method. You, I think you need to be aware of method of section which we don't cover in our syllabus, right? But there is a method to solve all these trust. Finding the internal forces acting in the trust members. Okay. So now we go to okay. Like I said, another one is we we skip six point five, which is not in your syllabus. The space trusses, though actually those who uh, probably not you guys, but the new the new syllabus for uh, aerospace students, they will have to learn about the the space trusses, three D trust. Okay. Okay. Now we go to frames and machines, which is the final part, six point six. Okay, frames and machines. So, what are they? They, com they are composed of pin connected multi force members. Okay. Previously, in trust, it's just the two force members. Remember that. Please remember that. In trust members, they are only, they are actually two force members, right? That's why you can simply see, uh, see that they are either intention or compression, right? For the straight member. But for the frames and machines, they are multi force members. Right, which means that they are not only two. The forces acting on them not only two. It's multi, more than two. Okay. So the frames are designed to support loads and usually stationary. It does not move for frames. Right. On the other hand, for machines, it contain moving parts that are designed to transmit and modify forces. Right. So usually for frames. It is stationary, right? For machines, usually it moves. Okay. So who are in statics now? Frames or machines? The answer is both are in statics. That's why you are learning this both frames and machines now. Okay, not in dynamics. Like what we discussed in the very beginning of statics lecture. When something moves, it doesn't mean, necessarily mean that it is dynamic. Okay, what does it mean by statics? Statics is either it is stationary, I mean, it's straightforward, right? Everyone understands that if it, something doesn't move, it means that it's statics, right? But remember, I told you initially that even for moving objects, it can be statics as well. How that's so? How's that so? When the moving object is moving at a constant velocity. There is no acceleration. Okay. What is mean by statics? It's either it's stationary, f equal to zero, or it is moving but at constant velocity, f equal to zero as well. Okay. Because f equals to ma, a is acceleration, zero acceleration, moving with zero acceleration. So it becomes static as well. Okay. So machines is statics if it moves with constant velocity okay there's no acceleration right so same like what we have done since the very beginning to apply the equation of equilibrium to each member to determine other forces right so i think the gist of statics here you can see that in any chapter in any problem you have to use equations of equilibrium to find the forces or the moments, right? So please put this put this in your mind, right? Okay. Uh, so the steps: first, you isolate each part by drawing its outline shape. Okay. Please draw the outline shape. We will uh, we'll discuss about this later on. I mean, don't just draw line. No. For free body diagram, when you want to draw free F, B, D, free body diagrams, okay, please draw the outline shape. Otherwise, you might mislead yourself. It's not about just the marks and all this stuff. You might you might mislead, sorry, mislead yourself. Okay, so please draw the outline shape. 
and and then you and then you show all the forces and couple moments okay forces f and couple moments m okay acting on the part right and then you have to and find what is known and what is known what is unknown okay force and couple moment so for this f and m you you need to identify whether it is known or unknown right and then you have to assume sense of unknown sense of unknown force for a moment right and then you indicate a dimension on the outline shape okay on the outline shape you indicate the dimension and then you apply equations of equilibrium to find those unknown force and couple moment all right what are they equation equilibrium f equals to zero okay summation of f equals to zero and summation m equals to zero okay again like i said because it's statics so it is summation of force to zero summation of moment to zero in the news later on, you will see these forces and these moments are not equal to zero because there is an acceleration, right? So the applications, okay? Frames are commonly used to support various external loads, okay? In order to design the frame, we need to determine the forces at the joints and supports, right? While on the hand for machines like those above are used in various of applications, okay? Forces and moments are required when designing the machine's memory. Okay, so frame, frames and machines are two common types of structures that have at least one multi-force member. Okay, please recall that trusses have nothing but two force members. This is the main difference between truss and frames and machines. Okay, for truss, okay, it is two force members, right? While for frames and machines, it must have at least one multi-force member, okay? I mean, for instance, look at this frame, for instance, this frame on the left hand side, that you have this member DB, you have this member AB, BC, and all these pulleys, right? The hook over the here. This, at least one of these is multi force member, then it becomes frame, all right? If you have these trusses, truss members, and then everything is two force member, then it becomes truss, right? But why it becomes frame? Because at least one of these members, it is a multi-force. It's not two force member. Okay. So now it becomes frame or machine. All right. So now again we have said uh, we have discussed about this. Frames are generally stationary and support external loads. All right. At this frame. While on the other hand, for machines, it contains moving parts and designed to alter different forces. For instance, this excavator, right? this boom and yeah this boom so basically it, it can move right this this machine over here so machines as you as the name implies it contains moving parts right so steps for analyzing the frame of machine okay like we said before draw free body diagram of a machine uh at this member x three okay so first identify okay this is the hinge should be to identify any two force members first okay. okay we have discussed about this previously you see in this system you have member a b you have member b c at member a uh, sorry at point a at joint a it is pin connected and at point c it is pin connected as well right and between b and c somewhere in between we apply the load 200 external load right okay if you realize actually this one is a b b c it looks uh i mean at, at glass it looks like a truss right but it is not a truss okay the reason is because you see at a b for member a b okay it is a two force member right same like truss but for member b c is definitely not a two force member it is a multi-force member right because we applied 200 meter load on the body itself. Remember that when I talk about the truss, the load, the loads must be applied at the joints, right? For instance, at B, for instance. But in this case, it's not applied there. It is applied on the member itself. So it, because of this, it makes this BC member as a multi-force member. And subsequently, now this one becomes a frame. Right, I hope it is clear. Okay, 
so the hin okay go back to the hin and divide and to force members first okay the reason is because it will simplify okay in this case it will simplify your diagram because now you see it, in general speaking if you have pin like this at a generally speaking you say that oh i have this horizontal vertical support and horizontal support now it becomes like two uh, two forces right over here but actually the resultant of this will be this force itself right so that's why that's why for this member a b right you know that it's a two force member so you can just simply draw this fab along the length of ab okay and then for for the member bc electron your a, fab is already like this you know the direction you just have to find the right thing. All right so this will simplify greatly your analysis All right so that's why you need that's why the hint is to identify if you have any two force members first because you know you will know the direction of that force and yeah you become just one uh, resulting force right okay so another hint is you know that the forces on contacting surfaces usually between a pin and a member are equal and opposite okay equal magnitude opposite direction okay and then for a join with more than two members or an external force it is advisable to draw the body diagram of the pin okay if the join has more than two members right more than two members or it has an external force so actually you can choose instead of choosing member pc you can draw the Fourier diagram on the pin itself, all right? Okay, and then after this free body diagram, you develop a strategy to apply the equations of equilibrium, right? What is the equations of equilibrium again? We have talked about this so many times now. Function of f equals to zero, right? In this case, it's a 2D planner, so you have f equals to zero, you have f y equals zero. You have two, instead of one equation, you have two equations, right? And then, if necessary, you can find uh, you can use summation of moment equals to zero as well. All right, and then look for ways to form single equations and single unknowns. Okay, this is actually comes from the experience. Okay, this is what we discuss. Uh, this sentence is all about. I mean, you can write f equals zero and whatever, and then what f equals zero and these equations. But the the wisest way is actually for you to indicate uh, to to identify which actually which equation that you need you can write first and then you can get the unknowns directly from that one equation right so that you don't have to write lots of equations and only then you analyze that's not a good practice i mean it's not wrong but uh from from practices lots of practices inshallah will you come to the point that you know which equation you can start with Okay, not necessarily you have to start with fx to zero. Okay, you can start with fy if if y gives you if if fy gives you directly the unknown, right? So these are some of the uh, frames, uh, yeah, for the frames. Okay, and some of these will be discussed uh, in the tutorials. Okay, stay tuned for that one for the videos of the uh, tutorial videos. Okay. So only we will discuss in the tutorial videos, right? It looks uh, difficult, but actually, if you do practices on this and try to understand uh this is how to simplify some of this stuff then inshallah it will be easy okay and that's all for your chapter six okay uh, trust frames and machines right thank you assalamualaikum